Okay, we are starting back up again on this idea of what sorts of adaptations were needed for plants to colonize land. And here is a brief list, gametangia means gamete houses. These are ways that sperm and eggs could be protected from drying out. So when you look at the top of a moss, if it's a female plant, it'll have a little vase-like structure at the top that's almost closed in, and there'll be an egg inside that, a little egg. A male moss will have a similar kind of tip to its little spongy green structure, and that tip will have a sac that is full of sperm. Sperm and eggs are called gametes, and so these are the gamete houses that protect the sperm and eggs from drying out. And another major adaptation was lignified vascular tissue. This is a way to support the body as it grows in air. And um, we'll see a slide in a moment that talks a little bit more about those. Another major structure is stomata. These, these actually evolved early on, even actually before lignified, so I should put that there. <laughs> um, stomata are like little mouths, and they help get carbon dioxide and oxygen in and out of not so much the cells as the leaves. And uh, then we've got, as another major structure uh, that evolved is seeds and these are ways to protect the zygote from drying out. Now what is a zygote? It is a fertilized egg. A fertilized egg and a zygote then grows into an embryo. So we'll see a picture of a seed in a moment. This is what our this mini slideshow is going to be all about. Let's start with gametangia. These are Again, structures that protect the eggs and sperm from drying out. And this is a fern gametophyte. That means it produces the gametes and it produces the eggs in a place called the archegonium. And it produces the sperm in a place called the antheridium. And you've probably never seen a fern gametophyte. They're about one to two millimeters big. So when the sperm fertilizes the egg, then that grows into a bigger fern. Um, that is the kind of fern you've likely seen. But this is sort of like a baby fern in a sense. So let's look a little bit more at lignin. It is a complex polysaccharide with a very long chemical formula, 31 carbons, 34 hydrogens, and 11 oxygens. No need to memorize this, but if I were to give you the formula, um, I'd want you to be able to tell me how many hydrogen atoms there are, etc., in a molecule of lignin. So it's a polysaccharide molecule. And it doesn't bind to water, so it's a really good molecule to line the water transport tubes of plants called the xylem. So it's an important part of what we call vascular tissue. So lignified vascular tissue is um, what we talk about being the xylem and the phloem. And lignin also fills in the spaces between the cells. It makes wood strong. And so um, when we think of wood, we're thinking uh, partly of cellulose and partly of lignin. And of course, this whole point is to help plants grow taller to reach the sunlight. So let's just jot that down. Helps plants reach sunlight. Now it's important to remember that all these adaptations that we've talked about um, took a long time to evolve. They evolved by random mutation and then natural selection. Um, but here's a picture of lignified vascular tissue that you see in woody plants that you wouldn't see in ferns or um, grasses or certainly not mosses, which don't have vascular tissue at all. So let's look at these layers. The vascular cambium is what gives rise to the sapwood, which is also known as the xylem. And the phloem, which is what gives us the sugar transport. So xylem is for water transport.
Phloem is for sugar transport. And uh, that's what lignified vascular tissue allows the plants to do. Another major adaptation which evolved really early on are the stomata. These are, the, again, those little holes that allow oxygen to leave the plant after this process. And take a second to see if you can remind yourself what this process is. You get carbon dioxide, we add water, and we end up with glucose and oxygen. So hopefully by now you are thinking of photosynthesis. But there's another process that plants do also where the stomata would be helpful to allow carbon dioxide to leave the plant. And so the opposite process of photosynthesis is where we start with glucose, we burn it up with oxygen, and we produce carbon dioxide and water. So by now I'm hoping you are thinking of the answer. The process, this process would be cellular respiration. And then another structure that meets the needs of land plants, this fourth one we talked about, are the seeds. Seeds are structures that keep the zygote from drying out. And remember that a zygote is a egg plus a sperm that will eventually grow into an embryo. And so there's a little embryo inside this pine seed. Embryo inside the pine seeds. <clears throat> and these seeds have a seed coat that protects that embryo from drying out. And they also have little wings, in this case, to disperse the seed inside. Remember our helicopter fruits from maples that we looked at. Um, and then also the seed coat let me just draw this arrow here. The seed coat protects the embryo from drying out, which wasn't a problem, right, when the ancestors of plants, the algae, still lived in water. Seed coat prevents drying out. And so we're going to stop on this slide, but you might want to pause here and your handout for this lecture has this diagram that's blank and so it might be good for you to take a second to fill this out and we will meet back again um, to talk about the next part of our lecture.